mapping controllers inside of FL Studio 20. Hi guys, John Judd here. Today we're talking about mapping controllers inside of FL Studio 20, as well as MIDI CCs and things like that. Before we get into this discussion today, I'm going to advise you to hit F11. We're going to go to the MIDI tab. You're going to find your controller in the list. I'm assuming your controller is on. I happen to have an Oxygen 61 M Audio. And once you have selected it, you need to make sure you enable it. In addition to that, we're going to be talking about MIDI outs. So something that's going to make this whole process a little easier. You're going to hit F11, General Settings, this Auto Select Linked Modules deselect that what that's going to do for us is it's going to make it so we can have a midi out on the same screen as your vst or multiple midi outs on the same screen as your vst so today we're going to be talking about armor which is native we're also going to be discussing contact we're going to be discussing omnisphere and we're going to be discussing zebra if you have massive or fm8 or any other synth all these concepts will probably be universal first up armor the native plugins like Harmer, mapping them to your controller is a really simple process. You take a control that you might want to automate, such as a filter, right click, link to controller. Now, once I've hit that button, I'm going to move the slider on my controller right now, and then it's moving. That would make it so you could record that movement as you were going through a song or something like that. One of the great things about FL Studio also, let's say you tweaked something, this knob right here, and let's say you walked away for a second, you just couldn't remember what you had just tweaked. You're like, ah, oh, which knob was it? I messed with something, I like that sound. Go over to the arrow on the upper left, go to Browse Parameters, and the highlighted one, that is the knob that you just moved. So that is the equivalent of being the last tweaked parameter. You have all these parameters already mapped out. That's a pretty exhaustive list of things that were mapped out. One last comment about linking to controllers or automating things. In your browser, go to the middle, I don't know what that thing's called. The paper looking thing, it's a folder looking thing. You go to the current project, you go to remote control, and this tells you all of the things that you have mapped out in terms of linking to controllers. All right, now we're moving on to contact. It's pretty likely that most of this would apply to other VSD instruments. So the first thing we're going to do, click over here for the tools, with the tools, and there's a little MIDI section and an input port. You don't have to pick this, but for some reason, I always start with nine. It's just my thing, I guess. Close the tools. So now we've set the input for that. Now pull up a MIDI out. You'd go here under MIDI. You pull one of these guys up. You're going to set the output port of the MIDI out to nine. Now it can send things to contact. Also, you want to set it up with the correct channel. This first instrument I have in contact is set up with MIDI channel one. You want your MIDI channel to be number one. That's how they're going to communicate with each other. And this is how I do it. I'm sure there are many other ways to do this in FL Studio, but this is the way that made sense to me. Right click this and you're going to configure it. What I'm planning on mapping is the attack knob. So I'll call it attack under controller. This is something to think about. A lot of times VST instruments have mapped out a bunch of CCs, MIDI CCs, continuous controllers, and sometimes they haven't. In many times with contact, MIDI CC number 20 is usually an open one. Just to prove that, we're going to hit this arrow here and we're going to hit Browse Parameters. That's going to bring up all the parameters for these instruments. And if we go down, here are your MIDI CCs. The reason I made this video is because a user had commented, how do we map modulation wheel and things like that? Modulation wheel is almost always pre-mapped to CC number one. I think the user had commented on the randomness. Sometimes things randomly work, sometimes they don't work. This is probably the reason why, because some of them are pre-mapped. As I was saying, controller number 20, MIDI CC number 20, is usually an open one. So that's the one that I almost always select right off the bat. Once again, I'm going to configure this. We're going to call it attack. Controller 20. Channel 1. 
accept. It seems like it's somewhat engaged, like the name came alive and the knob, it's not doing anything because you know why? It's not mapped to anything. So here's the neat thing that you can do. Go over to the feature that you would like to automate or map to your keyboard. Right click, it says MIDI Learn. Click MIDI Learn. It actually says MIDI. It actually, <laughs> reading is a great thing. It says Learn MIDI CC Number Automation. So I'm going to hit that, and then you're just going to move this. And look at that. Now it's moving. I want to do that with my keyboard. I don't want to have to grab this knob and turn it. That would be silly. I might as well grab that knob and turn it. You're going to right click and you're going to hit link to controller. And I'm going to grab a fader right now. I'm going to grab a fader on my controller. Slider, fader, whatever it is. Here it goes. And now my fader is moving this. I literally just picked a random parameter to automate. Let's say I want to automate the release now. Configure this next knob. Configure, and we'll call it release controller. Now, the last controller we did was a controller 20. You're going to increase the number by one. And if you're mapping a ton of these, be careful because you might run into some conflicts or something if you are mapping like 30 of them, which I don't think you would, but maybe you would. I don't know. The last one we did was 20. This one's going to be 21. And again, channel one. And we're going to accept. Now it's kind of alive. Nothing, nothing's happening. So what we have to do is, once again, we're going to go to this release. We're going to say learn MIDI CC yeah, automation. And now you're going to turn this knob and they are one in the same. And again, just to show you, if you want to link this to your controller, right click, link to controller, blap. And I'm moving the knob on my controller right now. That's how we do that. Where it becomes interesting is when you have something on a different MIDI channel. I would almost always do this. Here's our channel rack. I would call this K5, which is contact, channel one, mods. And for some reason in the channel rack, I always color them yellow because that's just the way I do it. So the next one is gonna be K5, channel two, mods. Color that yellow. And there is that bad boy. Remember, you got to set your port, set your channel, channel two. Now we're going to go over here. Let's say I want to affect the attack on this instrument. We're going to go configure and we're going to write attack. We can do 20 again, controller number 20, because it's a new channel. But for each channel, you can start over those same numbers. We're on channel two, except obviously the knob is not going to do anything just yet. Right click, MIDI learn. Move that knob. And there it is. So now you have two different MIDI outs that will control different parameters of different MIDI channels inside of contact. Omnisphere. This happens to be Omnisphere 1. And if you don't own Omnisphere, I would really suggest you get it. Same with contact. Mapping this is going to be the same exact idea as contact. Enter the edit zone here. I'm going to grab a random thing here. Let's say you had some filters on a low pass filter of some sort. A common thing to map or automate might be this cutoff knob right here. So now we're on the next VST instrument. You need to set the MIDI import to something else. I set contact to nine. The input port is now going to be 10. Set your MIDI to 10. And we're on channel one. So it's that simple. Remember what I did? We're going to right click to configure this MIDI out. And we're going to call it the cutoff. Remember, controller 20, we're hoping. Let's back up a sec. Let's go here. Browse parameters. Ah, 20 is open. Let's try this again. Configure. Cut off. Controller 20. Channel one, accept. No, well, obviously it's not doing anything just yet, but now in Omnisphere, we're gonna right click. It looks a little different than in contact, but it says MIDI CC learn. Do that, and then move your knob. 
You see that? I got a little weird thing initially. I think I've seen that before here. So now that works, you could also link it to your controller if you wanted. We're going to just try another one just because that was weird. Configure. You have to increase the controller number. 21. Channel 1 still. And accept. Obviously, this is going to do nothing just yet. Right click, MIDI learn. <laughs> Isn't that a little weird? There's like some kind of anomaly. But it's not creating a problem. It's just a weird anomaly. Okay, so that's how you do it in Omnisphere. Let's say you had another channel because it has eight channels. You could go to two, pull up another MIDI out, and you do the exact same thing. Zebra. Actually, this is Zebra HZ. Zebra Hans Zimmer. I usually do this one in a little bit of a different way because this typically will play nicey nicey with the last tweaked parameter feature. So watch this. We're going to tweak that knob a little bit. Browse parameters. And the highlighted thing, that is the one you're looking for. So then if you want to map it to your controller or automate it or do anything like that, you could just link to controller. I'm going to link it to my controller. I'm going to turn a knob right now. There it is. And now it's working. To sum up, if you want to map this to your controller, tweak it, browser, parameters, the highlighted bad boy is in one, right click. I already linked it, but I'm going to do it again. Turn your knob, bingo. That works. The modulation wheel. So nine times out of 10, I open up a VST like contact and I can just touch my modulation wheel on my controller and it'll just work like this. I literally didn't have to map it. It automatically links. This is a different instance of contact. So right now I have this one open, but this one right here is this. And I'm pushing the mod wheel right now on my controller. Nothing's happening. Make sure you have the correct contact or correct VST selected because now my mod wheel is working. So that is usually pre-mapped. If for some reason, sometimes you need to do this. Remember, we want to set this kind of thing up. Go over here to the tools, set your in. I'm going for 19 maybe. Why not make it harder? Okay. <laughs> okay, configure. We're going to call this the wheel. One. Channel one. I'm turning my mod wheel right now. So now I've linked that to the controller here in the MIDI out. If for some reason you are a person who's never done any of this kind of stuff and you want cool things to happen, watch this. You pull up your playlist. I'm kind of making the assumption that anybody who's watching this video already knows this, but in case you don't, right click, automation clip. So now, as you're going through, the song, watch the wheel move. And that is automation for that particular parameter. And that's how I typically deal with the modulation wheel. I'm not the most tech savvy guy. I get the basics done for the sounds I need and that's it. I don't have a ton of hardware. It's a very simple setup. There might be other locations to get more information on that kind of thing. If you're a guy or a gal who likes to map every single thing and you have a ton of gear, you can get more information elsewhere, I'm sure, because that actually suits my needs for the music I write. So one of the very first thoughts you may have had if you're new to FL Studio or new to music production, why would I want to automate any of these things on VSTs or native synths? The reason is it will bring your music to life. If you're always playing static synth patches, if it's a well-programmed preset or something like that, it'll have its own unique way of evolving through time without being totally stagnant. On occasion, you run into things that are stagnant. Automating things or recording automation through your controller by having it mapped is one of the best ways to breathe life into your music. So I hope this helped you figure out mapping controllers. Thank you for watching, and I do hope you have a great day.